Welcome to the Bubba Army YouTube channel. Welcome to Bubba Unsponged. It's where Bubba the Love Sponge, me, does an interview with somebody cool. They might be real famous. They might just be my friend. Hard telling. This kind of is both. This guy is my friend, and he used to be real famous, and I think he still is. Uh, Keith McCants uh, in the studio today. Hello, Keith. Hey, how you doing today? Let bro? me see about it. Good to see you. I don't know if Blitz is switching or Blitz. If you're switching, give me a couple knocks, and if I need to switch, whatever. Just uh, let me see. I can get. I think Blitz might be switching, or I might be switching. Keith, how are you, my friend? It's been it's been a while. I'm doing fine, man. It's been a, it's been a minute for us, Bubble. Now you got to get right up on the microphone, Keith. You got to right. oh, hold on here. Boom! You got to get like right up on that microphone. There we go. There you go. There go. And you brought a friend of yours. Now you son of a bitch. I'm not that I'm not appreciative of the guy that you brought in because I am, but uh, I thought that you were bringing in Robert Blackman, the ex Seattle Seahawk, that went in the '90 draft after you. And played for the Colts, and that's who I thought you were bringing. I'm like, oh, Keith's bringing in another NFL guy, and instead he's bringing in an aspiring politician. Same thing. Oh, yeah. Robert Blackman. Is that your name, Robert? Yes, it is. As in the football player. <laughs> well, I'm trying to do the name justice as well, so. <laughs> yes, and you're running for city council of St. Petersburg. That vote is less than a month away. It is, and I'm hoping uh, to what be What district victorious. are you in? District 1, but it's a citywide election, so anybody in the city of St. Pete can vote. How many uh, city council members' uh, seats are there? There's eight total, uh, four up for election, two are incumbents running for re-election. So. And so we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, Keith, obviously. Uh, now, Keith, so every Wednesday I do a thing called Bubba Unsponged. It's outside of my regular show. I do it live on YouTube. And, and then we repurpose it and you know play excerpts on our regular show, and we do real well with it. But, like, I had Deion Sanders on one, one week, uh, Tony Stewart. Um, I've had a bunch of radio guys on, so, you know, it's just a natural progression uh, to have an athlete like you on, uh, who is a good, as also a good friend of mine. We used to, was it 92, 93, Keith, that we kicked it? Yeah, 1990, 90, 91, 92, 93. 92, 93. I got yeah. here in September of 92. Yeah. Where did we, how did we very first meet? You know how I think we first met? I think you heard me on the Power Pig talking all that shit, and you had to come down to the studio and see what it was all about. I think that's how it went down, didn't it? I think so. You were talking so much crap, man. I'm like, who is this guy? So you drove up check this guy out. with your Benz? Uh, Keith McCants, Alabama. I think you graduated in, was it the 80, your last season in Alabama would have been 89. Yes, it was 89. And let me just let me just think about who was on the eight. I don't even know who was on the eighty nine. Was Derek Thomas? No, Derek Thomas was on the eighty eighty eighteen. Eighty eighteen. Yeah, he came out in eighty nine. Mike Shula. Yeah, Mike Shula. Quarterback. Yeah. Cornelius Bennett. Yeah, he came out. Al, you, and you guys at the eighty six, eighty seven, eighty eight, eighty nine. Your four years. They never won a national. I mean, you guys never won a national championship, did you? No, we didn't. How and close we, did you guys come? We came, we came real close, man. We came extremely close. I think we played Miami for a forward in um, uh, 19, 1990 and the Sugar Bowl. Lost 25-33. Man, you were the man. Now, as, as, as heralded as you were in the 1990 draft, at, at, for a while they had you going one, didn't they? Oh, yeah, they had me going one, man. Then Jerry Glanville cooked up some scheme and all that kind of stuff, and I end up, this, this is crazy stuff happening in the draft. And I'm dropping from number one and number number four. Well, first of all, the Cowboys had their first pick, but they lost it because they they went, I think they got Steve Walsh in a supplemental deal. So then it was supposed to be, what, Indianapolis? No, yeah, it was supposed, Indianapolis to be, it's supposed to be Atlanta, and then Atlanta traded to Indy. Yeah, right. And they, you know, Jeff George, yes. Jeff George, uh, Illinois. Then so now at this point, when 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 Atlanta's on the clock in the ninety draft, are, are your phone ringing? Like so, are you at home? My my damn dog keeps trying to get in. Hold on here, damn it! Pookie, get in here. Come on, Pookie, get in here. Pookie, get in here. Sorry about that, Keith. That's all right. This isn't regular radio, so we can be a little bit more loosey goosey. All right, cool. So so in after, let's take it back to the combine, Keith. Um, you, did you do the combine? 
Uh, or did you do one of those uh, VIP pro player days? Because you were just, VIP. You were, they, they, you're all, a they, all, man. they all came to the University of Alabama. And the reason I had them come to the University of Alabama because we I had some guys that there that needed to get a look in there and they get got a chance to get to get looked at. So you're like, I can do my boys some justice here. I'm gonna make yeah. them because because I'm a big because I am you know a top five guy. Uh, I'm going right. to make them come to me. So you didn't go to the combine, right? Right. You do a pro. I think they call that a pro day. A pro day. Do a yeah. pro day at Alabama. Did um was was uh was Perkins there to uh, oversee? No, but it was no. Bill, Bill Curry. Curry. Bill Curry was Bill there. Curry. Now, when you do a pro day, uh, Keith, how does that work out? Like, do you just get some uh, potential seniors that are, are, you know, could potentially go to the NFL, and you guys all kind of just do drills? Yes, guys. Some some of the guys that are, that are, that are seniors that are come that last year they get a chance to work out in front of the whole those whole 28, 28 teams. That, that's uh, that's what it was back then, and all the guys really appreciate that because some guys got looked, some of you guys even got picked up, and um, so for your pro day. Who do you think you helped out the most that may have gotten more eyeballs on them than would have maybe maybe they didn't get invited to the combine or maybe they wouldn't have done as well? A, um, I don't know. Um, did any of the homies come here. up to you and say, "Hey, man, Keith, thanks"? Yeah, yeah. There's quite a, quite a few guys came up to me and and, and and thanked me for it. So for your pro day at '89, who? Was every was there, was there thirty one teams back then? I think there were twenty eighteen. Twenty was every one of them there. Yeah, all twenty eight teams was there. All twenty eight teams. Yeah. Do you do the forty, the bench? Like, what did you yeah. do for your pro day? Um, and what was your forties? How fast were you, Keith? Were you four six? I ran a four five four, I think. But I was listed as like a four four three, and it was kind of disappointing in uh, in, 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 my, in in my speed, but. Well, I'm not only you're six three. You're what? You're you were built six three two. What two sixty five? Yeah, something like that. And, and I mean, I was, for two, you I was, I was two two fifty. All right, six three two fifty. A linebacker, a guy that can cook, and you, and you said you were disappointed at a four five. Yeah. You were supposed to go four four. Yeah. But you go four five. <clears throat> so when does at this point? I think it's Atlanta on the clock at number one. Did you have to do like the two hundred and twenty five pound rep, or did you skip that? Yeah, I did that. I don't. I don't know how many I did. Were you strong back then? No, I wasn't. I wasn't that strong. I was a lot faster. But faster than you were strong. Yeah. And so, when did the when did you start? Like you know, you're dro you're dropping a little bit. You said Glanville cooked up some shit on you. Is that yeah, is that Glanville, how it first started? Yeah, Glanville, Atlanta did a, what you call a shop job. That's when they call a media guy like me and Pascarelli called him in, and it, all this stuff is in my book. Right, right. I, I got a book called My Duck Side of the NFL by Keith McCann to explain everything. From my addiction to to my playing years of being a hitman. Dark in the side NFL. of the dark side of the NFL. It's all, and you can get it through Amazon. Oh, Amazon. Right. Yes. And so then that just came out. Yeah. Or it's yeah. been out for a little bit, and we'll continue to promote it. Dark side of the NFL with yeah. Keith McCann's available at Amazon. And it goes through a lot of these questions. And so Glanville starts what? Like kinda 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 fucking y'all on the PR deal? Oh uh, yeah. He hired this guy named Lynn Pascarella. Well Atlanta Falcons hired him and they do do a shop job for maybe fall in the draft and, and all that kind of now, stuff. Now was it because they the wanted to pick you up? No, because they wanted to discredit me for not taking me. Oh, so they didn't take you. <clears throat> now they but they traded to the Colts last minute and the Colts weren't looking for a linebacker. They were looking for Jeff George, obviously. Yes. So then number two comes up Jets I, I think they took Blair Thomas, yeah. Penn State. They're not looking for defensive help. The first person that you probably could have gone to may have been the Seahawks were at, th at three, but I think they were looking for more of a down line, and they went with Cortez Kennedy. Yes. And then Bucks come in at four, and Perkins uh, was form. Now, did, did you play for Perkins at Alabama? Yeah, I was, uh, I, was, uh, I, was, I was with Perkins at Alabama. He recruited me. As a as a high school senior, yeah, and then so he, Perkins then he is like leaving. he left, and then Curry took over. Yes, and so Perkins at this point did Perkins pick you because the Bucks truly needed a linebacker, or did Perkins pick you because he just knew how much of a stud you were at Alabama? Well, Perkins been watching me through high school all my high school career, so and, and he he knew he knew the talent level that I had, and, and I was a now did Perkins a basketball player. Did, did Perkins pick up the phone prior to da draft day and, and go, Keith, I got you. Like if you're available at four, we're gonna get you. Pretty because, much, because I know that stuff happens. They yeah. they will sometimes. And did you have your deal done? Now, were you still hoping to go one through three, or did you know after all, after the Glanville fucking and all that kind of stuff that you probably were gonna? Did you know that you might drop to four? Yes, I knew I was gonna drop to four. And so at that point, was your deal done after Perkins had, had called you? Uh, pretty much. 
it pretty much it pretty much was a done a done dollar. Here here is the ninety. Uh, in the beginning of this calendar. This is the ninety draft, and I think I think Robert, you're the one that got this from a guy in England, didn't you? It was a guy in Australia, and it's extremely hard to find this old footage. You have to talk to a lot of strange people in a lot of weird corners of the internet to get this stuff. So now now Keith, at this point, what 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 Chris Berman says. Is this some of Glanville's bullshit, like the the stuff that they were saying as far as you were partying and stuff like that? Was this all Glanville shit? Yeah, no, it, it really was. Here we go. The year in 1990, the name Keith McCants uh, had to be everybody's top choice. Uh, junior linebacker, Alabama, uh, decided to come out. Uh, That's right. You came out as a junior, Keith. Yes, I was. Now, Keith, did you come out as a junior because you, at this I think you even said that you knew that your knee was not doing as good as the NFL knew, and you probably knew that you couldn't play another senior year, or you'd do that much more damage to your knee. Exactly. I knew I, I, I knew You knew I you had to hurt. get out. I, I, yeah, I knew I was hurt, but I, I decided, come on, come on. Well, you had to. Yeah, um, I had, I had, I had no And choice. everybody figured that he would go first, that he would indeed be uh, become a... Uh, now, <clears throat> Keith, during the prodding and the medical, the medical history and stuff like that, or during your pro day, did anybody sniff out your knee or nobody did? Everybody looked at the knee, and as um, soon as soon as I got drafted and, and, and I got on a plane and came here, I had exploratory surgery with Dr. Carson here in Tampa Bay to see how bad the knee was, was actually what it was. So did uh, and did the Bucks keep that from everybody? Because when they opened you up, was it like, oh shit, this knee's worse than we thought? No, it wasn't. But they knew it was going to get worse. Oh, so they knew that there wasn't a quick fix, right? That indeed, you know orthopedically they just couldn't fix it they were gonna have to do something drastic so they knew didn't at that point did they did, did they did they did their attitude change towards you once they opened your knee up the well, bu- the block the box well, i don't know I, I don't know if the attitude changed towards me i know that i was i was i was kept from the field my from my rookie year and uh the fans was complaining i was complaining i want to get out there and play and prove myself and that's pretty much at the end of the season. That's what that's what I did. And now, wasn't it it's, uh, Keith McCants, ladies and gentlemen, overall fourth pick in the '90 draft? Good friend of mine is too. Too, we hung out for a couple years, '92, '93, like as friends. Like we were, we were like not only is it cool to have Keith on as a former player and talk about his book and with his friend Robert, but Keith and I used to kick it back in the day. And so it's kind of like uh, you know talking to a friend a little. But I, Keith, just now, Keith, how long have you been back to the St. Pete area? So I know that year. you were up in Alabama for a while. Yeah, I went to Alabama for a while, and then came back here in St. Pete for a while. I've been about a year now. And I think you're doing some radio stuff, are you not? Yeah, I am. Um, so we fast forward to 90. Here's here's the draft. This Now it's – they've picked three. They went – it went uh, Jeff George in one. Jets picked uh, Thomas at two, Penn State. Seahawks three. Now I think at this point everybody's like, okay, Keith McCants has got to go. It makes sense. It's Ray Perkins, his ex-coach, and Keith McCants' stock has fallen, and this is them talking some shit. Remember the Falcons or whatever they wanted to do uh, with their pick. If you were with us this, weren't with us this morning on game day uh, before the draft began, we reported the story out of the Atlanta Constitution. Same thing happened to Sap, didn't it, Keith? They yeah. they muddied him up night before. Remember? Yeah, they did. It, like the you know, like story. oh, he smoked marijuana. Well, big fuck. Like who cares? <laughs> I know. I mean, if they let smoking weed legal, you guys wouldn't have to be hooked on fucking pills, right? right that's true. <laughs> like seriously, the NFL needs to look at you know we're going to make legal. You can relieve some of your pain by getting high and not having to fucking take. Qu- I mean, I can only imagine the shady shit. That happens in the NFL, shooting you up with cortisone and take these pills and take those pills. And that's all legal, but you can't smoke some weed to feel better. And, right. they, and they, I think Warren drop, dropped like 10 spots, didn't he? Yeah, he did. It really did. Too. Warren was pissed off about that. Unnamed physicians that said that Keith McCants may need knee surgery that would shelve him for six or seven months. Uh, and so, Keith, that was right. Right? That was right. Yeah. That report. All the essence... Now, Keith, are you sitting at home? Because at this point, man, you know, you're a player, you're tr- and it's going to be big money, and there's a big difference between being the number one guy and being the number four guy, and I know at this point... $7 million difference. And, uh, 
and you're just seeing this money <laughs> slip away, and you want to take care of your family, and you want to buy the bins with the boats and have the white bitches like all of us want to do, <laughs> and, like you did, even though, I mean, I, you wrecked havoc with what you got. I can't even imagine if you had $7 million more than you had. <laughs> I'm kind of glad that you, because you would have gone fucking crazy. <laughs> Kelvin for oh, the wow. entire 1990 season. Now, this comes on top of some things that have been questioned about McCants. Maybe that he doesn't work as hard as he should. Uh, maybe that uh, that off the field he's enjoying himself too much. Uh, a lot of people who... I will tell you that Keith and I did enjoy ourselves. Maybe not too much, but we certainly had some good times now, didn't we, Keith? Yeah, we did. We yeah. had fun. We not have been in the know, but nevertheless... We had a blast. ...the perception of Keith McCants. Uh, Tampa Bay has the next selection, Ray Perkins... Is the one that recruited him when he was the coach at Alabama, and so was Ray cool. Yeah, Ray. Ray was a player coach. He he, he really was. So out of all the play, the guys you were, I think you, uh, Buddy Ryan was a coach. Who was the coach? Yeah, Buddy at, Ryan's a great coach. Who was the coach at Houston when you went there for a year and a half? Buddy Ryan. Buddy Ryan, and then yeah, he went, well, then he yeah, went yeah, to yeah, Arizona yeah. and brought you in. Yeah, he did. All of this angst that Keith has been feeling. Inventor of the forty-six, right? Forty-six uh, oh, yeah. D. Forty-six D. Forty-six D. Something and, serious. Those 86 Bears are, it was the 85 or 86 Bears? 85. 85, uh, 85 or 86 Bears with the with yeah. with Singletary and Wilbur Marshall yeah. and uh, Gary Fincic and In about 10 seconds, we'll see what the Bucks do. Tampa Bay selects Keith McCants, yeah. linebacker, University yeah. of Alabama. Good. That's done. Yeah. Now I think they pipe into you, Keith, and you're live from Alabama from your mama's house, right? Oh, yeah. Close the book on that. Yeah. No, I actually the, my apartment in Alabama. What's the first thing you bought your mama? Uh, a house. I built a house. You built a house. Next the first pick is, overall. Uh, San Diego. Look, look how thick you are. Thick as fuck. Look at that. There he is, Keith McCanson. We, we told you Keith was with us earlier from uh, his Still home. had a pretty face on you, though, didn't you, cuz? <laughs> oh, yeah. I want you, man. Ain't too bad. We told you to relax. It wouldn't take that long. Uh, <laughs> Keith really wanted to say, I'll tell you what, it fucking took $7 million out of my pocket, bitches. All this nonsense. <laughs> That's exactly uh, what I was thinking. <laughs> by the Buccaneers and a guy who's Mama, you're getting 3,200 less feet, square feet, baby. All well, right. you can smile. All How right. How do you feel, my friend? Hey, I feel great. It's a dream come true. It's all over with now. Ray Perkins uh, talked to you a little while ago. Did you have a conversation with him yet, Keith? Yes, I talked to him a few minutes ago, and um, we discussed some things that we're going to have to do. So, Keith, I don't to play this all. At that point, had Perkins given you the bad news where they were going to try to put you from an outside fucking badass linebacker to a down lineman? And who is that? Don't even tell me the guy's name. I, I Fred... Uh, Fred Barney or somebody, some bullshit defensive coordinator had some brilliant idea to put you down as a down lineman? Yeah, he did. They, they weren't telling you that when they drafted you, were they? No, they didn't. Because you were out, were you outside or inside at Alabama? I was inside linebacker. And do you mm. think that you would have done better? That down lineman shit's for the birds, isn't it? Yeah. When you're used to playing up. Well, yeah, it, when, you, when you're playing up, you're playing middle linebacker. You had, uh, I was used to going sideline to sideline, but when you put your person, put a person on uh, one side, one one side of the field, you're able to the the, the, the the isolate that person, run away from him. And when you do run towards him, you overload, and it, it was just like bam, bam, bam. So when do they? The so, do, so when you report to camp, you know the report. They do they say, hey Keith, where you want to bring you down as a down lineman? That it had to suck because you'd never played down lineman before, had you? No, I haven't. And and did did, did that's that the conversation they had with you? Uh, they, they asked me how 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 would it be? Well, do I feel comfortable coming off the corner? And that's uh, getting the quarterback and this and that, being a Chris Dolman type of guy and being converted from linebacker to defensive end. And I think and, in I think in I think in. Ninety, you had st you still had two sacks though in ninety, yeah. And then ninety one, you got after you had five sacks, five sacks in ninety two. Thirty four pressures, hurries. Thirty four pressures and hurries, and then shipped off to Houston in ninety three, right? Yeah. Out of the guy, when you would practice for the Bucks, did you have to go against Gruber? Yeah, every oh, day. How bad is that? I mean, is he? And that's a big. That's a real man right there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's a big ass farm boy every of a man. Every day we faced each other. Oh, would you ever say, Paul, man, come on, cuz, just chill out, because he was intense, wasn't he, Keith? <laughs> Paul was great, man. He was, he was a great guy. We, I think on that 90 team, 
what is it, Reggie Cobb, yeah. Finney Testaverde, Gruber, and um, uh, let me see if you can remember the guy's name. A pretty good friend of mine. Well, at least, you know, we've kept in touch. Um, Indiana University guard. Ian Beckles. Ian Beckles. Ian Beckles. <laughs> Rookie uh, made the team. And yeah. went on went on to play for a while, and then I think I don't really know much about. I don't remember ninety one too much. Oh, I think ninety two. I think he played with Santana Dotson. Oh yeah, and that's the Bob year. Wheeler. That's the year my boy Ty J got in a cut. Yeah, eighty six. Right. Oh yeah. How close were you? And how close were you and Ty J? We was all right, man. We was all right. Ended up in the same spots, hanging out a little bit. In practice, yeah. did you have? To, that's a. Man, he played tight end. Did he ever? Well, no. Did you yeah. ever have him on yeah. the end? Yeah, yeah. I had to, I had to go against him in practice. That's a load. Isn't I remember it? when Tidy Mother passed away. Yeah. Oh, yeah, in Chicago. Yeah, and, and you know, we've it was had in Detroit. I think no, it was Chicago, Soldier Field. Yeah, and every year that he played for the Bucks or he played, he bought that ticket. Did you know that he bought that seat and would put a bouquet of roses at that seat that she died at? Did you know that? No, I didn't. It, yeah, I've, Ty J and I have become close, and um, every year that he played in the league, if he would play Chicago, he would get that seat somehow wow. and put a and put a, a a bouquet of roses in there to remember his mama. He, you know, Ty J has often said that. Have you seen Ty J lately? No, I haven't. He is in. He does like decaf, like he runs and does biking and stuff like that. And he said if he would have taken, he didn't even take the NFL serious. He's like, man, I just fucked around and I would just, you know, I wouldn't even go out. I would just get high and fuck around. And he's like, had I really applied myself, I could have been a lot better. He just yeah. did all of what he did on natural ability. Yeah. He was good. He was good. He was, he was, Big. He was outstanding. Yeah, he was. Big. He replaced Ron Hall. He said uh, the worst mistake, this is Ty J., uh, he, the the biggest mistake Ty J ever made is he was you guys I think he was playing against either Philly or Green Bay when Reggie White played. Yeah, and he uh, Ty J did something pretty good, like you know chipped him or kept Reggie off the quarterback or some bullshit, right? You yeah. know Reggie was like going half speed on one play, whatever, right? And Ty J got all up in his fucking grill and be like, "Yeah, Reggie, you ain't shit," Not, you know, like how Ty J would, right? Uh huh. And I guess Reggie said said some scripture and shit and then just absolutely annihilated Ty J like on three plays in a row. And Ty J was like, man, the worst shit I ever did was to talk shit to Reggie. I should have kept my big mouth shut. <laughs> uh, Ty J was, a, he's a bad, like out of all the dudes that you ever played with, whether it be in 93 in Houston or 95 at Arizona, I know you played with Seth Joyner, Eric Swan, Who's the baddest dude of all? Not not statistics wise, or how many anybody made the Pro Bowl, or like who's the truly baddest dude that if you had to be in a fight, you you you, you got this dude to be on your team. Would Ty J be one of them? Ty J had definitely been the top two. I had to go with Eric Swan. Really, Eric Swan was a master. He was a beast. I that's love a, playing inside this guy. That's what Deion Sanders calls a real man. That's a real. That's a grown man right there. Yes, sir. Cardinal defense. Seven fifty. Clock ticking in the fourth. Walsh. Not Here's Keith McCants. How did John run? How John run that guy? Oh, that's a big lineman. He can't get you. Look at that move. <laughs> On Jim Harbaugh. Look at that move. Oh, uh, you weren't you weren't knocking it over the pole, were you, Keith? <laughs> how did you how did you get this move? Hold on, let's just move. Boom. He's got a beat ball, and he does. Touchdown, Arizona. That was against Chicago. That was Buddy Ryan playing against his old team, was it not? Yes, it was. First half touchdown of the year. That's your I think that's your first touchdown of your career, isn't it? Yeah, it was. Only one. No, I need another one the next week against Seahawks. No way. Yeah. For Arizona. Yeah. You had two? You had Really? Yeah. It's on YouTube, too. I got to find that one. This guy's like, that, that motherfucking Keith McCants. I didn't think he had any gas left in his tank. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. uh, who was that? Dave Wanstead, right? Yeah. Look, Keith, you're trying to go to the strip club. Man, I got to go to the fucking strip club. <laughs> 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 Keith is already in Scottsdale going to fucking strip club. Hey, Keith, look. Oh, oh, we got a game left. Keith 
Jeff McKenz was a bust at Tampa Bay. Played for Buddy Ryan at Houston. They let him go. He's here in Arizona. Brought in to pressure the quarterback. And he's come up with the biggest play maybe of his career. Now, Keith, how big were you then? Were you like 270, 275 here? 265. 260. That's really light for a defensive lineman, isn't it? Yeah, I was there. I was there basically just to rush the quarterback. Just for some speed right speed on the corner. Yes. I talked to him yesterday. I, was I said, I see you. Compromise, Eric, Eric Swan. Now, is this Glanville as the as the play-by-play guy? Yeah, he is. Being a dick. He, yeah. Motherfucker, he he's all about being cool to you now, but he's not saying, well, I, I did a smear campaign back at 89 to really fuck this kid. He's not yeah. saying that, is he? No, nah, he ain't but saying that, that. Fucking two-timing motherfucker. But I said, said it. Did you? I said it, yeah. I said, I said it in my book. I like, Glanville did, and, and Lynn, Lynn High and you know, Lynn Pascarelli. You, you know who Glenn? You know who Glanville did dirty too? Brett Favre. Remember how fucking yeah. dirty he did? Brett Favre. He sure did. One of the greatest quarterbacks ever. And and Jerry Glanville said, "Man, you're never going to get in the game." Remember, it's called him an ass bucket. Yeah. I talked to him yesterday. I said, "I see you making all kinds of plays. I see you." Yeah, plays I could have made for you. You fucking hayseed. Doing things that you never did before. He said, "You know why? I'm right next to the big guy. I'm right next to the swan. They got they got to uh, count for him. They let me." Shut up, Glanville. You two time a liar. Go. I get to make plays. <laughs> what a play! That's the first defensive touchdown for the Cardinals. This. So Keith, when you were in when you were in Arizona, there, I think you were there a year. Two years. Were you there in two years? Yeah, 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 and a half, yeah. What was your favorite city? I mean, obviously you played in Tampa for three or four years and then went to Houston. Uh, I'm thinking Houston might have been your favorite city. Houston was the city. <clears throat> Better than T-Town? Better than the White House? Oh, yeah. It, 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 <laughs> what do you know about the White House, cuz? Houston, we won game from the Super Bowl. Oh, that's right. Who was the quarterback? Warren Moon was the quarterback. Yeah, motherfucker, I was going to say Warren Moon. Don't tell me. I'll tell you who's on some of that team. You ready? Oh yeah, Warren Moon, Sean Jones, yeah, and I think you had Wilbur Marshall. Yeah, did you have Wilbur Wil Marshall, William Fuller, and Lamar Lathan? We had a loaded powerhouse at the and the '93 Houston. And Buddy, what now? Why Buddy? Buddy did good there. How did he get fired out of there? Buddy, he didn't get fired. He had a, he got to, took the job for Arizona Cardinals. Oh, that's right, that's right. Uh, Keith McCants uh, in the studio today. Keith, what do you think about this? I got it on the screen now. And, you know, this, and, and, and Keith, I think that you know me to be not a racial guy. Like, I, you know, and I hate to say, this is a really a cop out when white guys say, well, a lot of my friends are black. Well, you know, it's true. I got a lot of African American friends, a lot. So you know that I'm not a racist guy. Right. Uh, you know that. Right, am, I, am I boring you, buddy? <laughs> You get some sleep uh, no, last night, no. guys? <clears throat> so you know what this blackface stuff. Don't you think that our society goes way, way overboard? And don't you think that our society should gauge people on what their meaning is? Like, if you're dressing, like, why couldn't I, Keith, dress up as Biggie Smalls at a Halloween party? Wow. Why couldn't I? <laughs> why couldn't I dress up like Keith McCants, wear a 90s Cardinals jersey, and be my friend Keith McCants? You know that if I did that, if I wore brown makeup, I'd be fucked. Like, it'd be bubble blood sponge, blackface. But that's not my intention. So this guy from Notre Dame, he's an African-American guy, and this is his past weekend that he was playing. And don't you think that's a little overboard and that that's just not a good look? Well, it, 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 it's, that's, that's something serious. That's overboard, don't you think? Yeah, like, kind of, that's kind of serious right there. And, and um, like, it's just, all you're doing is just open yourself up for people to screw with you. Because yeah. you're instantaneously just polarizing people. What kind of statement he's trying to make? Yeah, I don't know what he's trying to make. Like, you know, like, I don't know, like, that is a little excessive for eye black. I've known you, I know you wore an eye black before to keep the glare out, and that's not this guy's intention. Wow. Isn't that, isn't that just like if I'm the coach? I'm. T can you tell a coach now? Are are kids coachable, Keith? You know, you came up for the Bill, the Bill Curry and the and the and the Ray Perkins era, not too far removed from the you know from the Bear Bryant era, right? I right. mean, you know, and you. I don't think you can coach kids like the way you were you and I were coached. Right. Like you can't yank. Like I guarantee, if Buddy Ryan, if you were fucking around, he could grab your face mask and twist it and be like, "God damn it, McCants, get your shit together." Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can't do that to kids nowadays. And I don't know that a coach can tell this kid, I don't want you wearing that. Like, that's not the symbol that we want Notre Dame to be behind. I don't know if you can do that nowadays. Can you coach kids up like that, or do you have to hand them with, like, snowflake gloves? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. The, the times have changed so bad, man. They've changed the rules in, in, in football and, and um, 
And it's it's changing every day, so it's very very difficult to to say. And now, I mean, I'm sure you watch uh, football when you can, NFL. Yeah. And I mean, now it seems like everything's reviewable, and yeah. you know, like I I think it makes the game better. But I I think that we're just I, I don't know. I think that this concussion protocol thing has really got everybody all freaked out and. Are you part of that at all? Did you get any any part of that? Well, I'm still I'm still working on that, Bob. I'm still working working on that 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 that, that the concussion case right now. And I'm getting really close. So, who, to it. who were the people? Because Keith, you might be one of the most deli- uh, de- debilitated, hurt players at your age. Are you my? Are you fifty three, Keith? Are you fifty one? Okay, so you're a couple years younger than me, <clears throat> and. I mean, I want, when you got out of the truck today, I was almost sad because, you know, when we were together, like in 92, 93, you know, when we were hanging out, yeah. you were just a fucking strapping, big, powerful NFL, you know, machine, yeah. you know, and I was just fat ass. <clears throat> and I now get away better, get around better than you because I've not sustained, you know, what you had to go through in the league. And does the league have, uh, uh, lifelong health insurance for you or anything or do they just leave no. you out to pasture like what to leave you basically crippled like the way you are do they have anything for former players well now they they they, they will pay the copay on hip replacements and knee replacements or things of that nature but they 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 trying to get better at it and but before they had nothing for for the ex football players and um they just left us left us out to dry and that right there this is it was a bad thing so now, now uh, with the amount of money that they earmarked for concussion, okay, whatever there was a large amount of money, is it my understanding that nobody, guys like you, and you know, really, really hobbled up, concussed players, really haven't got anything? They still haven't really even divided or, or found out how they're going to do it. Is that true? Yeah, that, that is true. So yeah. no, nobody, yourself, Junior Sales, family, people that really suffered from these concussions. You've not got one one bit of real at all, nothing. No, not none whatsoever. But I talk about that. I talk about all that stuff in the book, and that's the reason I wrote wrote my book called My Dark Side of the NFL. People like Andre Waters, Junior Seau, Jeff Arm, Bobby Futrez, Tom McHale. People have wanted to take their own, try to take their own life because they lost a bit of their little life on life term as a normal human being. The struggle that we go through every day, not just physically but mentally as well. What was, did you ever get diagnosed as, and back in the day, Keith, when yeah. you played, nobody ever got really diagnosed as a concussion. If you didn't see five, five, you know, if you couldn't, if you could literally get out there and didn't have a fucking excruciating headache and didn't have, they just threw you right back out there, didn't they? Basically, basically that's exactly what they did. And, uh, but I had like 17 concussions and I didn't die, diagnose with the, uh, the effects. Dementia. Yeah. So. Do you find do you find yourself forget you know very forgetful and and having dimension? Yeah, I, I I do from time to time. That's that's why I have somebody with me ninety percent of the time. What uh what hurts the most on you, Keith? Your hip? Yeah, my hip. Not the knee that was in question. But, knee already uh, been replaced. Knee been replaced. Yeah. Now it's now it's your hip. Yes. And have you been have you been scheduled to go in at all? Well, yeah, I got to lose a few more pounds, so I've been been on a strict diet. What are you weighing right now? Uh, like three ten. You're not three ten. Yeah. Yeah, but you're six. What six? Yeah, I'm six five now. You, well, you grow, you grow, you grow, <laughs> you grow in your old age, bit. I thought you were six three. Yeah. Well, how shady was it? I know you can talk a little bit about it because it's so far removed, and it's all the rage now. You know, recruiting. Uh, on the collegiate level, and, and obviously your former school, your you know your where you're an alumni, you know Alabama is one of the very best at it. How how corrupt was it? Were you being recruited in eighty five, nineteen eighty five, eighty six? Is when the, the recruiting process did did virtually every school? What, could you have gone anywhere you wanted? Yeah, I could have went into school and, and I wanted to. Being a kid growing up in Alabama, was there anybody that was close to Alabama and you going? Was there a Miami? Was there a Florida State? That was uh, Auburn and Tennessee. And did you go to both? Yeah, yeah, I went. I, Visited I went, both. I, yeah, yeah I, vis- I visited them both. Was <clears throat> was either was were the were Tennessee or Auburn in the running at all? Yeah, no doubt. And did any shady shit happen when you were being recruited? No. 
No shady stuff with Alabama. No, nothing that shit. No, I just, I not like. Remember what was it? The SMU that fucking uh, Craig James and uh, Eric Dickerson were rolling around in brand new Trans Ams and shit. <laughs> no, I ain't had none of that. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you talk about in your book, Keith? You're a freshman. You go to you go to University of Alabama, and you know that when you're a football player on on for the University of Alabama, that's like next level shit, right? Yeah. And the women. Like what was was it? You're wow. this. You're this. You know. You're this stud out of high school, but from a small town. You don't really. I mean, right? You, yeah. It's very small, and, and you know, you were kind of Keith. You were kind of farm, weren't you? A little bit. You weren't oh, big yeah, city. I'm the old country boy. Yeah, you're country boy, right? Yeah. And you go to University of Alabama as this very high, one of the most heralded uh, high school athletes. How much pussy was just thrown your way? <laughs> A ton. And can you remember the very first rock star experience while you're in college? You're this fucking farm boy. This you're this <laughs> you're this you're this country bumpkin. And maybe you got three, four cheerleaders just going to town. Like, do you remember that very first oh wow moment? Oh man, the the, the, the dimension that kicked in. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> See, nobody asked you the cool ass <laughs> questions, Key. Nobody asked you about the White House. Nobody asked you about Bubba Clem getting an apartment. Nobody asked that shit now, buddy. <laughs> Let me just ask you this. Were there, were there some moments, Keith, when you're at Alabama and you're the big slinging dick, right? I mean, you're the man. Even your sophomore and your junior year, you're, you were, they knew you were going to go out early. Was there ever any moments, Keith, that you just looked around in whatever particular situation you may have been in and been like, man, this is fucking rock star shit? Hey, I'm gonna tell you this. I thought I was the man, but when I was there, I had Bobby Humphrey, I had Derek Thomas, I had Cardenas Bennett. I had the, I was a man next to the man. And when I saw what they was, how how life was treating them, and Kerry Gould and Pierre Gould, when I saw how life was treating them, man. This is how many lovely. years was Broderick ahead of you? Two, one, one. Yeah, but he'd already broke. He he already done that all rock starred out, right? Like Broderick, who showed? So when you go to uh, University of Alabama, Keith, who showed you the ropes? Like which guy took you underneath the ring? All right, come here, boy. My cousin did. Come my here, Rook. Get over here and let me show you how it fucking goes. Yeah, my cousin. Uh, 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 Was he on the team? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Freddie Robinson. Yeah, Freddie Robinson played cornerback, and uh, Willis Shepard and Angelo Stafford. They're, they're from my hometown. They took me and they showed me the ropes. They introduced me to the people I needed to know, and showed me how it was done. Now, when you come in, did you redshirt your first year? Yeah, I was. I All was right. like a Prop 48 my first year. All right, so Prop 48, bad grades, whatever the fuck. So you're eligible your yeah. second year. Did you start your second year? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, right. and, that's, yeah. And, and at that point, you still got uh, Broderick Thomas on the team. Yeah, Derek Thomas. I mean, I'm sorry, D Derek Thomas. Yes. He's inside, you're inside, right? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm inside, the outside. Oh, God, that was deadly, was it not? Oh, yeah. It's not a wonder you guys didn't have a better record that year. Who was your was it was Shula your quarterback then? Yeah, he was my no, my Shula. So your homies show you <clears throat> show you the way they go on to graduate. So when you're that junior, now who did you take under your wing and show the way of the land? How shit goes down? That's a Hammond, uh, uh, um, uh, George T. George T. <clears throat> yeah. Remember George T. Was it? It was. Oh, hold on, I'll tell you who it was. It was Lamar Thomas. Yeah. It's a sugar bowl, and Lamar starts fucking around, like starts showboating. Didn't, didn't George take it from him? Yeah, take it from him and ran it all the way back. George T., you know who my do – you, do you, let's see if your dimension is kicked in. What's my favorite football team? Do you remember what my favorite team is? I used to fuck with you all the time about it, and I only oh, – Miami. I don't, I don't, no. Who was, who was it? No. In fact, I only asked you for one set of tickets your entire career, and it was to play – it's when these guys came to town. They're my favorite team. Can you guess? I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. Green Bay Packers. Green Bay Packers. That's right. The Green Bay Packers. That's right. Green Bay fucking Packers. You played. Yeah. You played two or three. You played three or four times in Lambeau. Yeah, I did. What? And now is that some backward ass shit? Like you guys would go to like. I had some great games against Brett Favre. You did. Did you ever talk some smack to Brett Favre? <laughs> Actually, when I went to I left Tampa, I ended up going going to Green Bay for a tryout and so. Oh, you did? Yeah, I did. And uh, Brett Favre was there. Brett Favre, uh, uh, Reggie White. They were so happy to have me on their team, but I couldn't pass the physical. Bad knee? Still yeah. the knee comes into play? Yeah. 
when you played when you played in Green Bay, you know, you played obviously in Detroit, you know, yeah. you played in Chicago, you played in Minnesota. I'm talking about people in the league at that time, uh, you know, the Bucks were in the central. Um is Green Bay as sleepy? I've been to the Green Bay a lot, but I got to think that as a visiting football team, that it's really not. There's not a lot to do in Green Bay, is there? No, it's not, man. It just, it's just, it's cold. It's just cold there. When I was, when I was there, we was going to practice, man. I seen guys earlobes and pinky fingers falling off from frostbite. Where was your favorite road city to play? Like when you would go, and, and so playing for Houston in the in the AFL, and then obviously Phoenix on the West Coast, and then the Bucks for however many years, you know, for the, well, let me see, one, two, three, six, seven years you were in the league, you pretty much played almost probably, I don't know if you played New England or anything like that. Yeah, I did. Yeah. But where was your favorite place to play out of town? And um, why? Oh, man, I'm seeing. Dallas? Dallas was a good place to play. Philly? Yeah, Philly. Philadelphia. Oh, my God. Philadelphia. That's, that was a – oh, man. We had – with Philadelphia was the a dirty great South. place to play. The Dirty South. It did, now, when the, you guys would have cur- – like, when you have curfew and stuff, Keith, would there be ways to break curfew? Like, did all the boys break curfew? Like, if you were a Keith McCants or, a, you know, not, not some rook that's trying to make the team, but, like, if you were established, could you break curfew and did you? No, I didn't. You didn't have to break curfew. It's just all you had to do is get a, get somebody the keys a key to your room. Oh, like a like a, a friend that would maybe be swinging by. Yeah. And so you guys didn't have to room together. You'd have a private room. Yeah, most of the time we did. And if you had a private room, then you could just have a visitor. Yeah. And so there wasn't any. Well, you didn't have to really go out. You could just have the party come to you. Basically, <laughs> basically that's how it worked. Keith McCants in the studio. Keith, uh, a longtime Buccaneer, and then a Houston Oiler, uh, and then an Arizona Cardinal. Uh, his friend, Richard Blackman, who I thought was a Seattle Seahawk. Robert but, Blackman. I'm Robert sorry, Blackman. Robert Blackman. But instead, instead is a St. Pete guy that helps out Keith a little bit and is also running for city council. Keith, as we get closer to the election, uh, I should have you call the show, uh, Robert. I should have you call the show. Because uh, we're heard on AM820 and a few other places in Tampa, just to remind everybody to uh, to vote for you in the city council deal. Absolutely, I'd, I'd take all the help I can get. It's going to be uh, probably a tight election. Um, you know, trying to trying to spread the word and do some good. Uh, Keith, what do you think about the current Antonio Brown situation? Wow, man, uh, I want to. I, 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 I'm interested in seeing how. Um, Does a guy like that be able to come back, or do you think he fucked himself? I think he really screwed himself over, and uh, they're gonna have to take a very good look at the situation to see and how they can. Uh, well, first of all, he probably needs to get this legal shit taken care of, like whatever. Nobody's gonna touch him with the current shit that's out there. I don't right. think. No, they ain't gonna they ain't gonna touch him with a ten foot pole, and they they probably they probably shouldn't. And then if you do touch him, who gonna want a guy like that who want to be a scam artist on their on on their team? And you got Antonio Brown, the player, and you got. Antonio Brown, the person. So, now great he just, player, has he just person, been mis- has he just been mishandled? Person. Like, is, was it is it Drew Rosenhaus's responsibility to take him aside and say get your shit together? Or like, what what happens when you're a player of that caliber? Do people just are you just around a bunch of people that enable you and just tell you what you want to hear, and it just causes you to create this monster? Basically, that's what happens. Is you're around too many people that are telling you what you want to what you want to hear, and that you can what you can think. They think you can get away with because you're a marquee player, and you just got the wrong. He's taking advice from the wrong people. That's what I feel that's, that's happening, and not putting the organization uh, first, and that, that's what I think you need to do. And uh, somebody in the organization need to put him to the side and put his coattail and say, "Hey, like this, whole, there's no one man bigger than the team, and that's no, and and, and that's the way it is in, in football, it's basketball." baseball there's no one person bigger than the team who was the one guy that you played with whether it be from houston or whether it be from the box who was the one guy that you played with that was just straight money like just as far as ability as far as attitude as far as getting along with his teammates like just you know, like i uh, you never played with a reggie white or maybe you never played yeah. with a brett Favre, but like one move was he that classy? Was he just that straight money? Yeah, yeah. One more, he get get along with everybody. 
and, and and by ninety three in Houston, he had already established himself. So like, was he the like in in Houston? Like nobody. Like if you had a problem, do you have guys in the locker room, uh, Keith, that are like locker room guys? Like if there was some shit that went down, Warren would handle it as a team as a team leader. Uh, yeah, he would put he would put it put put his, his 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 two cents in. Like in in your days in Tampa, who was that? Who was that locker room guy in Tampa? Guy. Like who was the you know was it a <clears throat> was it a Broderick Thomas Broderick Thomas me uh, you know what I'm Vinny what? was Vinny was Vinny very step up issue or no no he wasn't quiet yeah how about Gruber quiet guy quiet guy yeah what about when you went to uh, Houston it was uh, Sean Jones Wilbur? yeah Sean Jones William Fuller what was what was what was, what was Wilbur Marshall like he was a badass in Chicago yeah he was, yeah he is, he still is. Wilbur Marshall was a good guy. Quiet kid? <clears throat> Y'all know. Not so quiet. And, and then uh, how about in Arizona? Who was the quarterback for you in Arizona? Uh, Dave Craig. Oh, that was the old Seattle guy. Yeah. Dave Craig. Uh, Keith McCants, former Buccaneer uh, in the studio uh, today. Keith's got a new book called The Dark Side of the NFL. It's available on Amazon. Keith, you're also doing some stuff for AMA 20. I think you're doing some interviews and some things for AMA 20 as well. Oh, yeah. And you just got on Twitter, I think. That's oh, how yeah. I got a hold of you. That's right. Keith McCann, Twitter.com. Did you see where my Twitter got suspended forever? Yeah, I know. What happened with that, Bubba? Uh, you know what I think happened? Yeah. <clears throat> Remember that little bitch, that, that kid, that little 16-year-old girl, that global warming bitch that was just like going crazy on global warning? Yeah. And she was being... I just said, shut up, little kid. I just said, hashtag, shut up, little kid. Because she was getting a little mouthy. I right. just, shut up, little kid. And that got me, because I told a little kid to shut up. I got suspended. Wow. Isn't that, isn't, that, isn't that some bullshit? It is. What do you think about the Colin Kaepernick thing? Wow. Did I get you on that one? Yeah, you did. Step up and, and say what you really tru truly feel on it, though. Um, I'd rather not come in on it. Can I give you my opinion? Yeah. And you can be my friend and tell me if I'm close or not? All right. I think that Colin Kaepernick misused his celebrity and polarized a lot of good people to be mad at some stuff. And that, you know, <clears throat> do you know who I had in here, Keith, in that sitting in your very same chair oh. that, that, it said, that said it the very best? Tony Dungy. Right. I had him in my studio, sitting in your very same chair. And do you know what Tony said? And now you can't argue that that's one of the coolest dudes. That, like Tony Dungy is royalty amongst the NFL. Yeah, he is. I mean, calm, collected, the epitome of a class act. Would you not agree? I agree. Well, how was that? Tony Dungy said, "A player that does what Colin Kaepernick does is a disruption to the team." And that he would, if he was Colin Kaepernick's coach, he would tell his players that you can take my weekly press conference as a coach. I get afforded a weekly press conference that has far more media. Everybody's here. And you can use whatever time you want during my press conference to deliver any message you'd like to. But let's keep it off the field. And let's keep it out of the game publicly like this and make a public spectacle out of it. And let's respect the people that served our country and use your celebrity and a different a different stage for your very important message. And I, I think that that's pretty I agree with that. <clears throat> and you know Colin Kaepernick a superstar could have very well have held held press conference after press conference and gotten all the footage on the same message that he wanted to deliver and kept it off the field so to speak and put people fellow players Owners, general managers, fans, coaches, general, put all those people at odds because it's a no-win situation. You know, it, it really is. People are going to have a definitive A or B. Right. And, and Keith, when you're a player, when you're a player, no matter how much you make, aren't you still an employee of that team? Yes, you are. When you got a paycheck, no did it come from Tampa Bay Buccaneers account? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Right. So <clears throat> if the... If the organization has a, a policy, you know, like Keith, you know, obviously 
Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the NFL have a policy where you can't, you know, roll up with, you know, a bunch of cocaine in your system. You're going to get thrown out for that. Well, <clears throat> can't they have rules that you have, you cannot kneel during the national anthem and that happens to well, be you a know team what? Room? You know, since that happened, that's, that, that's what's going to happen now throughout the, throughout, throughout the lead. It's going to be, it's going to be put, put in, put, put in, 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 um, in, in, in a team in rule. writing that there's certain things you can't do and that's one of them. You know, Jerry Jones said, <laughs> You won't see a Dallas Cowboy doing that because he won't be a Dallas Cowboy. That's right. And I mean, if the if the if, the if you owner, don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. You got to stand up and take a stand for something, and 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 and, and, and that, that, that that's what I, that's what I think. And by kneeling kneeling down to the national anthem, I think it's it's it's, it's just a slap in the face to all the veterans that went out and gave their lives for this country. And you see these veterans out here that, that's homeless and staying, things of that nature that uh, and. It's just a slap in the face. And, and, and you know, it's just, I, I agree with you. I really do. But, you know, I, you know, Colin Kaepernick felt very you know, strongly against police brutality and stuff like that, which I understand. But I think he could have done it in a better way, in a more classy way, not to divide so many people. Because right. just it's such a hot spot that everybody's going to be, you know, you're either on one side or the other. Right. Which causes people, you know, to be in a bad spot. Who was, was it, um... Was it? It was. It was McKay that owned the team, not McKay. McKay was the general. Who was the general? Hugh Culverhouse. Owned Hugh Culverhouse team. owned it. Yeah. When you were when you played, did you did Hugh ever come to practice? Not that not that often. You never got to play in the new stadium. You always had to play in the old Sombrero, did you not? Yeah, I did. And your and your practice facility was right over there by the airport, and you guys had to yeah. smell jet fuel, did you not? <laughs> Didn't they have like a their weight room was outside, Keith, and it would get all rusty? <laughs> no, nah, they just had some weights outside, but yeah, that wasn't was a, the main weight room. No, nah, it wasn't. And who was your Ray Perkins was your coach, and then what William Donaldson? Yeah, how much of an ass bucket was he? <laughs> well, he just stepped in. Well, he was, he just stepped in because they did what he was told from the GM. And then who came, who was the GM that, that uh, drafted you, Keith? Paul Phil Kruger. And then the the William Davidson guy came in for what a season and a half. Yeah. And then who came in? Uh, Sam Sam Wash. Sam Wash. What was he like? First he was just like an asshole. I heard. I heard he was a two. I think Ty J said that he might have been a two faced son of a bitch. He would yeah. tell no you. Doubt. He would tell you something like you know, and and then he would go out and tell the media something else and fuck you. Oh yeah. He, he what well, he had one couple good years out of Cincinnati, and then he came down here. One year he was five and three, and he was all. Remember he had like five and three in the paper, and he was all. And then he like completely shut the bed. Yeah. Who's the one that cut you? Was it Sam Weich? Yeah, it was. Did you ever have any words with him? Yeah, I did. <laughs> you did? Yeah, I did. Can you tell me what you said? I can't remember. <laughs> is that dementia kicking in again? It is. <laughs> <laughs> did anybody have to calm you down? No, I tell you what, I remember Sam, my, my, the mom called, came on the show, said, we don't pay you X amount of million to sit on the bench, get back in there, get him back in there. All right, Sam, watch. So you were hurt. <clears throat> yeah. And Sam said, fuck it, we're going to put him in. Yeah, we're going to play him anyway. And he played you and probably hurt you more. Yeah, he did. So now when you when you got cut, Keith, was it during the season? No, it was during preseason. During preseason, how yeah. does that go? Like, you're like, do they? Does it? Is it literally like the movies where you're at camp and they go, "Hey, kid, come bring your playbook down to like." How does it? And I'm not trying to make put an uncomfortable. Yeah, basically, key. that's how it is. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 I have never been cut too many times in my life. Right. But when and I'm not trying to bring that. a bad subject. I'm just saying how how it happens protocol wise. Protocol. Like, like, how do they say it? Like, do they come and get you out of your dorm room and say, "Okay, kid"? Oh yeah. Uh, and did you know what was happening? Like, if they go, hey, do they say, hey, Keith, you need to go see the coach? Uh, yeah, they say, hey, Kim Kans, you need to um, bring, come uh, come see the coach and bring your playbook with you. And you know what it is? You know exactly what it is. So <clears throat> do you go at that point and meet your defensive coordinator, or do you go meet White? Yeah, uh, you go you go and meet both of them. And they're there? Yeah. And uh, they say, okay, Keith, well, it ain't two reasons why we're letting you go. Number one, free up the money, salary. Number two, you damaged goods. You hurt. And what and did, uh, does that what you first thing they try to do is shop you around for a trade. That's and the first thing they try to do. So did now while they're shopping you around for a trade, are you getting that rumor back to you that they're shopping you around? Like does your agent yeah, know? Yeah, the agent know about it. So the agent be in like a week yeah. or so before be like, Hey Keith, I just want to let you know they're on the phone trying to trying to trade you. Yeah. 
And did, was there any potential close trades that you know of? Yeah, well, uh, actually, no, no, not, not that I knew of. And then, do you did you go to Green Bay for yeah. a tryout after? Uh, yeah, I did. before Houston. Yeah, I went to. Um, actually, I went to New England Patriots. They signed me. I went to New England Patriots with Bill Parcells. They suit me up the same day. I get that I got ran in reverse. I fell. And uh uh-uh. uh. Looked at my knee and said, No, you damaged goods. Then Houston picked me up. Oh, so you played a game for New England? Yeah, I did. Preseason? Yeah. I did. And a guy runs reverse, you you blow out your knee. Yeah. There at that point, man, do they cut you that night? Yeah, they cut me that day. That the day. day. The next day. So you're going to practice and they're like, Okay, Keith, done. See you later. Yeah. Is it really that cut and dry? Oh yeah, it is. All right. <clears throat> so did you even have an apartment or are you just living out of a hotel? Living out of a hotel. All right. And you still had this big ass crib, I think, with Gigi back here, right? Uh, yeah. And so like what happens as a as a professional athlete, Keith? You had this I think at one time when you signed with the Bucks in ninety, you had the largest defensive rookie contract ever. Yeah. Right? Yes. And you got what, a million and a half up front? Two point five. Two point five million up front. Yeah. You had that badass place on the water. Yeah. Is that the first place that you bought when you came to town? Yeah, it is. All right. So when they cut you, what happens then as a dad and as a husband and as the head of the family? Like, does your does your wife and kids go to in the hotel with you, or do they stay back home they until stay, you figure out where you're going to work? They stay back home until you find somewhere solid to be at. All right. So <clears throat> at that point, you go to you're, you're living in a hotel in New England, and they cut you, and then now buddy calls you out of Houston. Yeah. Do you send for the wife and kids at that point? Yeah, I send for them at, the, at, at that particular point. But basically, they just stay there because I'm still staying in a hotel. And in I Houston? Get, yeah, in Houston. Yeah, I end up getting a townhouse and stuff like that. So Now, at that point, do you, do you call for the kids and the wife and they come over to Houston? Yeah. Now, do you have to sell the house in Tampa and all yeah. that, go through all that bullshit? Yeah, all that stuff, yeah. Did you do all that, or did you have to? Yeah. Did you have people to do that for you? I had people to do it for me, pretty much. It, did Did you end up getting screwed on the money with all? Is that? Oh uh, no, I didn't. It worked, so, it worked out all right. So you sell your house in Tampa. You move to Houston. You there for a year and a half. Yeah. And then Arizona. Did you get traded to Arizona? Or did you? Did I you got cut again. Cut again. Yeah. Buddy had left. Buddy had left Houston. Who came in to coach after Buddy? Oh, uh, in Fisher was it Fisher? Yeah, Fisher. But, and, and he caught you. Yeah, same protocol. Yeah. Hey, Keith, not working out. Your damaged goods. Asked the button around. Probably told him to cut me so he could pick me up. Does Buddy call you personally then after your cut and said, "Hey, ninety, yeah. get your ass over here." Yeah, basically that's exactly what happened. And was the money towards the latter part of your career? Let's let's say Arizona. Was the money okay? Was it decent? It was okay. It was, Mill. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was all right. I mean, you know, enough to you know still be a high roller. No, not enough to be a high roller. But I had incentive then. But but bubble, you look at my book. I got paid off incentives off tackles a quarterback, or hitting a quarterback, pressures and things like that. Yeah. Did you have Did you have touchdowns as an incentive? No, I didn't. I should. Stupid have. ass. You had two of them. <laughs> <laughs> Could have had you know two hundred thousand a touchdown. Bitch made an extra four hundred. What was your best year, Keith, salary wise? Probably at Bucks, right? Yeah, probably the Bucks. Was it more upfront money than it was salary? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Can you believe the salaries that are being thrown around now? Oh, One hundred and thirty million. I, 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 and that's something. That's something serious. I mean, wow. do, you, do you ever see the Michael Russell contract? What was it? I think it was a hundred and eight hundred for me. Yeah. Wow. How about that? Who's your favorite player in the league right now on both sides of the ball, offensive wise? Oh. Kid out of Kansas City, yeah. Mahomes. Uh, it's, he's pretty good. It's 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 hard, it's hard to say. There's so many great guys. Out you there like right the kid? Now. You like the Florida State kid? Uh, the Bucks got Jameis Winston. Oh yeah, I love Jameis. Winston. He's a big Jameis kid. Winston, Jameis Winston is doing, doing doing fantastic, man. I like that Bruce Arians guy, yeah. the new coach. Yeah. What about on the defensive side? How about I know who we might like? How about that 52 kid out of Chicago that came from Oakland, Mac? Oh yeah, he is awesome. He's a stud, is he not? Yeah, he is. Keith, yeah, he is. Keith McCants in for Bubba Unsponge. Keith, a, was it six or seven year NFL veteran, Keith? We see 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, six. Yeah. I think 95 was your last year. Yeah, it was. Uh, with, the, uh, with the Arizona Cardinals. Keith is back in Tampa, the Tampa St. Pete area. His friend, Mr. Blackman, is running for St. Pete City Council. 
And Keith was nice enough uh, to come in and do my Bubba Unsponged for me today. Keith, this is the, usually I do it over the phone, but today, you know, was the first time that I did it in studio because you're here. Right. And I, and I thank you for doing that. And we got to keep in better touch. Yeah, we do. We actually do, Bubba. And, and, and your book's out now. Yeah, my duck side of NFL on Amazon by Keith McCants. How long did how long's it been out, Keith? About uh, a few months. Three months. A few months, yeah. Is it, is it called My Dark Side of the NFL? Yeah. Does it talk about the pain pills? Yes. And uh, and the <laughs> and the shooting up with the quarter zone? Oh yeah. Talk about this, yeah, all of that. Keith, would it be <clears throat> like when Sam White or whoever you know we got a blown out knee? Would they take you aside and said, Keith, we're going to give you this shot? You're not going to be your, your, literally. It's in your, the book, Bubba. You got to read the book. It, it's, it's all in the book. And the NFL is the precursor for a lot of guys to get hooked on these pills. Isn't it, Keith? Like, that's where a lot of it starts because take these pills and shut up because you got to, your property and you're like a, you're like a, you're like a, a racehorse and you have to be ready to play. That's right. Right? I mean, like a piece of meat. I tell it like it is, man. You got to get the book. My Dark Side of the NFL with Keith McCants. It's on Amazon. Go pick it up. I'm sure it's a great read. Keith, I'll get it. All right. And uh, let's have you back soon. And Mr. Blackman, as you get closer to the election in the next two or three weeks, um, I'll get your number and we'll do a couple call-ins and, and you know, try to get you some, you know, some votes so, I can, so that I can have a friend on the St. Pete City Council. That'd be great, man. The now, don't election's... win and forget about me and Keith now because you're all big time. <laughs> I've, I've known Keith for too long to forget about him. I think we're attached to the hip. It's been about 10 years. So, Keith, thank God for this guy helping you out a little bit, Keith, because, you know, you can't get around that well. I know. And, and you know what, Mr. Blackman, thank you for taking care of my friend. Hey, uh, for better or for worse, I think we're together now. So, That's hey, right. <laughs> you know, Keith, and I'm really, I'm really proud of you. I'm not going to talk any shit or anything, but, you know, you've had a long, hard road. You've been through a lot. You've been yeah. on the highest of highs, and I've seen you a lot lower than you are now. It looks like you're actually doing good. It looks like you're clean. It looks like you're sober. It looks like you're doing good, you're bright eyed. Good. Oh yeah. And you know, you look you look good, buddy. I need to, let's just get you a new hip. That's all. So you can get back to that four six. <laughs> Four five, four, four five. Four five. Keith McCants, former Buccaneer, former six seven time seven year uh, NFL journeyman and more importantly a new author of his book called my dark side of the nfl with keith mccants go to amazon and get that mr blackman thank you as well thank you so much for having us and everybody thank you we're over and out on bubba unsponged i guess i'll play a little thing here oh nope i guess i'm not playing a little thing here uh, caveman i'm just gonna play a little there you go just take it away i'll play you some back i'll play you some background outro music there uh, and uh, Keith, I'll walk you out, my friend. Mr. Blackman, I'll, let's exchange information so that you got my number. Do it. All right, Keith, thank you, buddy. All right, Bubba, thank you, my man.